Jamaica Bay is one of the best places to come look for birds in the country. Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge is tucked between Brooklyn and New York's Kennedy Airport. But despite the urban neighborhood, it's a prime pit stop for migrating birds. A birder like Glenn Phillips might even describe it as juicy marshland, which makes it kind of a magnet for birds coming through. Phillips is the executive director of New York City Audubon, and he's agreed to give us a few birding basics in preparation for spring migration. So what was that? That was a robin. That's what that was. But it was a startle call. It's a good a good first sighting for the day. You know, people think of them as the, the first sign of spring. Of course, here in New York City, they actually winter here. It's one of the things that's interesting about migration is that, that people think of New York City as being north and that our birds fly south for the winter. But for many birds, New York City is south. And there are a lot of birds that fly south to New York City and spend the winter here and then head back north. Migrating songbirds fly at night and they'll fly two or three hundred miles in a night. And by the end of their flight, they will have used up every bit of fat stored up on their body. They will even partially digest their own digestive system to get enough fuel to keep flying. So when they land in the morning, they are, they are completely exhausted and starving. They're so hungry that they, they just need to eat so that they can have enough fat stored to make the next leg of their journey. Uh, here's a, we've got a little duel going on here. This male red-winged blackbird and that one over there are staking out their territory. This is why birds migrate, is they're coming to do this. The male red-winged blackbirds get here first, because females are going to look for the place with the best bugs, with the most protected nest sites, and with the, the flashiest and showiest males, you know, holding down those territories. We're stepping into a turkey battle. Yeah, this is, this is exactly a turf war. But not all bird battles end in squawk. Given the number of feathers, I'm guessing it was some sort of waterfowl, and probably it was a, either a northern harrier or a cooper's hawk that had lunch here yesterday. It's one of the exciting things about birds is that you really get to see the whole cycle. It's not just you know, a, a little bird sitting on a wire, but this is you know, nature with tooth and claw. Here's the main attraction. There's some northern shovelers out there and American widgeon, that's what those are some American black duck. There's some ruddy ducks out there with their little white cheeks. And then there are about, uh, oh, I don't know, 10,000 scop right over there. I don't know. Maybe, that's, maybe it's not quite that many. Maybe it's only 5,000. One of the women who, who taught me about, about birds in the Northeast, one of the things I loved about her was that she Every time she saw a robin, she never said, oh, it's a robin. She said, oh, a robin. <laughs> and, and it was real, it was genuine. She really just, she called it bird joy. That indescribable sense of, of pleasure, of joy, when you see or hear or watch, even sometimes just knowing that the birds are there, even if you can't actually see them, can just make you happy. Bird joy.